Here's uh, some help on our Topic 2, Cycle 2 homework, where we're looking at calculating acceleration, uh, which should be review from first quarter, and then using that acceleration to determine the net force, and then draw a force diagram uh, for the object that we're discussing. So here we have a skateboarder with a mass of 65 kilograms, moves from rest to 6 meters per second in 2 seconds. What is the net force acting on the skater? And assume that there are 5 newtons of frictional force opposing motion. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the net force. What information are we given? Well, the mass of the skater is 65 kilograms. So m equals 65 kilograms. Rest means the initial velocity, so v sub i, i for initial, is 0 meters per second. And the final velocity here is 6 meters per second. And it takes 2 seconds for the skater to get to that speed. So the picture that we're going to use is our force diagram, which we'll come up with at the end once we have values for it. The relationships we need to keep in mind, we went over um, acceleration in the first quarter, that acceleration is the change in velocity over time, that that change in velocity occurs. And then the new formula for our cycle here is that acceleration is the net force divided by the mass of an object. So let's first calculate the acceleration. The skater went from 0 meters per second to 6 meters per second, so that change in velocity was 6 minus 0, or 6 meters per second, and it took the skater 2 seconds. So the acceleration was 3 meters per second squared, or 3 meters per second per second. Once I have that acceleration, I can use that to plug into the formula here. So I want to find the net force. I know the mass is 65 kilograms, and I know the acceleration now is 3 meters per second squared. So I can plug in the numbers here, or I could manipulate the equation to multiply both sides by mass to get net force equals mass times acceleration, or 65 times 3, which is 195 newtons. Remember, that's the net force. So if there's 5 newtons opposing the motion, then really the, uh, the force in the direction of the motion must be 5 additional newtons, or 200 newtons. So we're saying the net force is the sum of the forces to the right and the left. We're just looking horizontally here. We know the net force equals 195 newtons. We know 5 newtons of force oppose the motion, so that, that's why there's the negative. It's an opposite of the direction of motion. So we know 195 equals the force to the right plus negative 5, so the force overall force to the right must be 200 newtons. So that's how we calculated the, the net force and then figured out for the force diagram what the force is to the right. Perhaps this will make a little more sense too when we look at the force diagram. Vertically, we know forces are balanced. The skater is not accelerating up or down. Motion is constant. Left and right, 195 newtons of net force. 5 newtons of friction opposing the motion. So we know that this friction, uh, this, which is the skater's shoe pushing off the ground, would be 200 newtons. Because 5 newtons are taken away from that by friction of the wheels hitting the ground, you know, those little bumps. So overall, 200, and you can consider the left here negative 5, and then we'd have 195 newtons of net force to the right. So go through the examples like that. They're much the same where you need to calculate the acceleration using the change in velocity divided by time. Then you need to plug that acceleration into the formula A equals F net over M to solve for the net force, and then try drawing out the force diagram. Organizing the problem in this five-step process is a nice way to make sure uh, you understand all the parts going into it and kind of helps you solve the problem step by step.